All right, we are live. Welcome to you, me, and BTC Live. Glad to have you. We have a video stream running on Hangouts and YouTube as usual, but we also have a kind of a new system for our audio stream, so hopefully that works out. The uh, bless you, John. The uh, the audio levels could be a little mixed up just because it's new stuff. I'm not sure how it's all going to work, but if it's really that bad, I'll touch it up, and hopefully you guys can enjoy it anyway. So, yeah, thanks for being here on another Wednesday afternoon. Time to cover some Bitcoin headlines. I am Daniel Brown, and I'm here with Tim Baker. Yeah. And John Stewart. And also the Silk Toad. Of course, we love having the Silk Toad with us. And I put one of our uh, new stickers up there. We just got those a few days ago from, well, we worked out the deal with Bitcoin Not Bombs. I'm fairly certain that they create them kind of uh, in partnership with Liberty stickers. Uh, but anyway, cool stickers. We have a ton of them, and I'm not sure what we're going to do with them. Should we give some away, guys? Some of the stickers? Yeah, yeah probably. All right, so I don't know. I, I, I don't want to get too crazy right now, so I'll just say, how about three? Why not three? The first three people to tweet me and ask for a sticker, I'll send you one for free, completely free. Just tweet me, ask for a sticker. Uh, at me and BTC, that's that's me. Uh, I mean, it's the whole thing, and it's just me, whatever. But yeah, tweet us. You can use the hashtag if you want. And uh, ask for a sticker. I don't know. Ask a question for the show. Send us a headline, whatever you like. And then we'll work out some details after that. I'll send you a message or something. Cool. Good idea. Me. I think that was my idea. So <laughs> Anyway. Tweet us, ask for a sticker. Hey, the place you should be right now is you, me, and btc.com slash live. You can watch the stream there. You can listen to it in our new audio player stream thing. Uh, like I said, whole new thing. Hopefully it works well. It's through Spreaker, which I set up a few days ago. Should get us some much better stats. There's actually also a chat function in Spreaker, so I... I'll try to keep an eye on that. I'm not sure how many people will be seeing that and using that, but you're completely welcome and encouraged to chat us uh, on Spreaker if you can find that. And, okay, so you can watch, listen, tweet us. There's a button right there. Like I said, ask for a sticker, three people, and there's a poll. We actually got one uh, ready for today, and it's an interesting one because... Mark Carpelli's was arrested just a few days ago. We're going to cover that story. And it's actually a really simple question, just for fun. Should be an easy answer. Did you get goxed, yes or no? Or you can fill in whatever answer you like. Uh, tell us how much you lost. Tell us if you're doing bankruptcy stuff. I don't know, whatever you like. Did you get goxed? You, me, and btc.com slash live. All right, well... I think uh, that's most of the housekeeping. As always, you should be checking out Genitrust and Wall of Coins. If you're looking to buy Bitcoin today with cash, super quick, you don't need an account, head to youmeandbtc.com slash buy. And we have a little widget there. Uh, it'll help support us a little bit too. We'll get some kind of a cut. I don't know how much, maybe half a percent or something. Uh, so you can support us and buy Bitcoin super quick through Wall of Coins. You can also uh, sell Bitcoin on the platform there too. Uh, super convenient. I use it all the time. Cool. All right, let's get started. What? Uh, who wants to get started? And who has the best story? The best one? I don't think we're not really qualified to making. <laughs> Me, I want to go. I don't care if it's not I want to go, Daniel. It's about Australia. It's about Australia. Um, <laughs> oh, crap. I had that one. There so did I. We don't, have, no. uh, we don't have real internet out there beyond the Western civilization. Anyway, um, recently, I guess, there's been a... This article is actually from today, from this morning. 
but it's article I'm looking at is from Reuters. It's called Australian Inquiry says digital currencies are real money. I'll put it in there just because you guys probably already saw it, but I'll just put it in there to get back. That's not right. Um, <clears throat> all right. So the Australian government made an inquiry into. I guess I don't really know what they looked at necessarily. I never really know what these things look at to, to determine if cryptocurrency is actual money or not. But so far, it looks like Australia is kind of going, I mean, it's going in a better way than just saying that Bitcoin isn't at all useful. It's saying that they're going to recommend treating digital, <laughs> digital currency as money. Uh, it will simplify the tax, and it will... I mean, it'll make it so that they have to be monitored, <clears throat> monitored more. So that's a little bit of a downside. What is it in the U.S.? Is it? It's not treated like money, right? It's treated like a. It's a, yeah, like a like a commodity, I guess. Yeah. I think it's a property. Property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I get this change is going to make any company digital, <clears throat> any, any digital cryptocurrency. Co any digital currency companies to register with the Australian Transaction Reports and Analysis Center and run due diligence on customers, enabling businesses to better identify and mitigate money laundering and terrorism financing risk in the conduct of their transactions. Interesting. Uh, so I'd, I'd, I hadn't heard that aspect of the story. So the reason that they're, they want to kind of call it a real money is so that they're allowed to monitor it more? I'd say that's more likely the reason than because they want to help people by giving them <laughs> more money. Uh, has, okay, as of yet, has it really come out yet that Bitcoin has ever really been used to donate to uh, like Al-Qaeda or something? Or is Al-Qaeda even around anymore or do they just get rid of that? That's actually a good question. I, uh, talking about it, it just doesn't exist. It was probably made up in the first place. Well, yeah, I mean, I... I my guess is that there I haven't heard any like specific stories like oh Tim you should know they don't have the internet in the Middle East they can't accept it so actually there's no problem with terrorism it's just they can't even get it there we just can't let the internet get to those people then we'll be in a whole lot of trouble because then they'll just start getting Bitcoin donations from everyone <laughs> yeah yeah, no, I, I haven't heard any uh, specific stories, but my guess is, I mean... I just I mean people really always bring it up. It I was like, there was like, well, terrorism, it, it must be used for... I'm like, I don't remember ever seeing what's in ISIS. I, uh, did ISIS receive Bitcoin donations? No, that's what I'm okay. saying. I've, I've been. This is the third time I'm trying to say this. No, I, there have, I don't think there have been any specific stories where people said, yes, this definitely happened. But at the same time, like, why wouldn't it? Like, if it's pro there has, like, it has to be going on out there, right? Uh, oh, wait, they actually are. They are allegedly receiving donations. ISIS is. Okay. Is okay. Um, Okay, well at least I just didn't understand why they keep on fucking bringing it up again. Why? Again. Why do you? Why would you think it would be allegedly though? Why wouldn't they be using it? Uh, no, I wasn't saying that they wouldn't be using it. I was saying because of the fact that they always bring it up with money laundering. Like, I understand okay. money laundering, but they're always just like, oh, and it's terrorism. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you're not seeing that much about terrorism. Right. So you're saying that that the amount that they worry about terrorism and money laundering is way more than it actually occurs. Yeah, more money laundering I'm sure occurs all the time with it, but uh, not as much as terrorism. Okay, cool. Maybe not. Now someone who had someone die from a Bitcoin... Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Wait, what? <laughs> now you got to finish. What about dying from Bitcoin? No, I'm going to finish. Talking about Bitcoin assassinations? <laughs> no. So any, uh, anything else on that one? Um, not really. I mean, it's more just interesting to see what they do in the future to stop ISIS-funded Bitcoin bombs yeah. in Australia. Well, let, let me ask that then. Like, suppose that the reason that they're about to consider it is is exactly what I said because they want to monitor it they want to monitor it quite a bit is it 
is it better to have a uh, how am I trying to say this? Is it better to have it considered a real money and monitored? Is that helpful for Bitcoin? Or, or would you rather not have it really recognized and not be monitored? That would have been a good poll question, I guess. But it's okay. We got a good one still. Uh, I, Me personally, I probably prefer that it wasn't monitored. <clears throat> I, th I think it wasn't yeah, really think... accepted. But at the same time, I don't. I don't think it's going to hurt it that much because, I mean, it was going to get monitored if it was either that or the government our government was going to do, I guess, what the U.S. does, and they're going to try to monitor it probably anyway with, in some places. Yeah, I was going to say, why them. Why does them recognizing it as a currency make them able to monitor it more? Well, I don't know. I mean, just legal I things like... That. They probably have certain rights to look at money and stuff, and if if it's not recognized as a money, they might not be able to to uh, Wait, regulate who, transactions and who oversee grants them, them the rights. Oh, I know. I I agree stuff. that they shouldn't be able to either way, but but maybe still just according to the well. Law, no, I mean what I'm saying is like if if they're making the law. Well, yeah, if they're making the law, they could just make a law that, oh, we can regulate Bitcoin, too. It's not money, but we can regulate it. Yeah, I can see that. But maybe it's just easier to say it's a money, and then they automatically, it's it's easy to know what you can and can't do based on what you can and can't do with Australian dollars. So, I don't know. I would imagine if it's money, people are more likely to comply with regulations. Well, that's it's true, true too. Yeah, money. and that that's that might be another reason that they would do this because not only can they do it, but the people will will agree and and comply just because. Oh yeah, it's money. I I gotta keep records of every single transaction and all my customers. And yeah, that's a. I think that's a good point. In some ways, that could be a good thing though because people will also take it more seriously. And like you were saying, if they're keeping records and stuff, that's good. So. Yeah, that that's part of the, yeah that's part of the reason I was asking the question is because if they consider it a real money, then people will take it more seriously. And so I was like, well, maybe the trade-off is yeah they'll monitor it, but more people will trust Bitcoin and get into Bitcoin. But I still think I would lean towards the second option. And I'm I if if they really do want to like keep a whole lot of track of it. I'd probably actually, uh, I'd probably like prefer that they didn't consider it a money because I'm not super concerned about if other people get into Bitcoin and try it and try it out. I mean, yeah, I love that stuff and and we want that to happen, but whether somebody else does or doesn't, I still have it. I can still use it for stuff that I want to. I guess that's not completely true because I, I wish that more people would accept it. That'd be that'd be even easier for me. So so yeah, I guess I I do still want a lot more people using it, but if they're gonna keep track of it, maybe not. Then again, they're probably gonna keep track of it either way, so so I don't know. I, I have no clue honestly. Maybe this would have been a good poll question. <laughs> anyway. You you yeah. said the latter, Tim, right? Are you uh, how concerned are you about other people trusting Bitcoin and giving it legitimacy, or or are you just happy where it is? Like you don't care if other people use it, you're just you can use it and whatever about them. Uh, I mean, I'm happy. Like I'm happy with it how it is now. I mean, I'd like to see it progress. I'm not against it progressing necessarily, but just because it doesn't really do that much for me, just that Australia started, it, it's not like good news to me, but it's not like bad news either, because I do think it, I agree with John that it will, it gives it some more legitimacy, it, it gives it some more, like even if it's not being used in the way that I want to see it being used, it still gets more people into it, and I can't really change it, so I'm fine with it, like I can't do that much about Australia <laughs> deciding to, to check everything, so there's... I don't really see a problem with it, I guess, because I'm not in Australia, and 
I don't see how it helps anything, them checking it, but they can do whatever they want. Yep, makes sense. Not not really a huge deal either way, I guess, is kind of the conclusion that we came to. It's it's helpful a little bit. It's it might hurt a little bit, but it's not there's not a huge ton of difference either way, so Nice. All right. Any other thoughts before we move on? I uh, cool. All right. Uh, on my screen, I'm seeing John next to Tim. So if you've got anything ready, John, I guess we can turn it over to you. But I do want to send out a quick reminder. Uh, well, there's a lot of things I could remind you, but for now, I just want to say, if you're interested in one of these super cool stickers. Uh, it says you, me, and BTC, your Bitcoin and Liberty podcast. Actually, which way did I put it? Yeah, Bitcoin and Liberty. Sometimes I say Bitcoin and Liberty. Sometimes I say Liberty and Bitcoin, just depending on uh, really it's SEO stuff. Depending on if I'm on the if I'm typing it on the computer, I want to say Bitcoin podcast. I'm not whatever. And if it's on a sticker, it's not SEO. So I'm going to say Bitcoin and Liberty Podcast, because I think that sounds better. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you want a sticker, tweet us at you, me, and BTC, and ask for a sticker. We already have our first request from one of our really loyal listeners. He's been around for quite a while. Josh, uh, at Star Soccer 9 awesome guy. He's, like I said, been around for a long time. Great, great listener. I chat with him on Skype all the time get advice, talk to him. He's, he's been great. And uh, he's also, he runs escrowmybits.com, uh, so it's a Bitcoin escrow service, so definitely check that out if you're interested. Brand new, all kinds of cool features, so escrowmybits.com. And, all right, anyway, I think I was going to turn it over to John. If you want a sticker, tweet to at you, me, and BTC. Go, John. All right, so this is a uh, story from techcrunch.com. Lot you want to drop Polish, a link real quick? Yeah. Lot Polish Airlines now accepting Bitcoin. So it's, a, yeah, as the headline suggests, it's a Polish airline that accepts Bitcoin. And um, it's the transactions are handled by PSP, which is a Polish payments platform. Uh, according to this article, Poland has been a leader in payments with a number of clever smaller banks offering more NFC and Bitcoin payment options than anywhere else in Europe. Uh, they said that they're open to helping the needs of all their clients. That includes people who want to use online currencies like Bitcoin. And um, they, they take pride in the fact that I guess they're one of the earliest airlines. I think there are a couple other airlines. In this article it says Air Baltic and Air Lut. Twanica. I don't know how to say that. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> but yeah, they, they are accepting Bitcoin, but um, I guess this is one of the first major European airlines to start accepting Bitcoin. I like his, his first sentence. He says, I'm not a big fan of the X accepts Bitcoin type of post. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we... we I'm echoing through you, Tim. I should stop shouting, maybe. Uh, we we cover we do cover stories like that a lot, and basically, and, and you know, sometimes they're worth talking about, but but still, you know, a lot of times what it comes down to is it's cool. Thanks. I'm glad. Now let's move on. Um, but he does say this one is very near and dear to his heart and actually interesting. I, I haven't seen why he said it's near and dear to his heart. Maybe it's just yeah, he likes I didn't, to fly to... <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe he's he Polish. likes to... What is, what is uh, KRK? I'm sure it's an airport, but I'm not sure. I'm guessing it's like I don't Krakow. Know. I think that's like the, one of the major cities in Poland. Okay. I'm not really sure. Anyway, though. yeah, that's cool. I, uh, I'm... I, unfortunately, I don't do much flying in Europe. I wish I did a lot. <laughs> but uh, in terms of airlines in general, I mean, I think that's great because I do fly now and then, and I would love to pay Bitcoin. So I uh, hopefully they start doing that in the U.S. I know there's uh, CheapAir.com. Don't they accept Bitcoin? 
uh, I think they do, and it's kind of a, it's what what's it called? Like a not a broker, but a, I don't know, a, a middleman kind of. They, they they do a whole bunch of airlines, I think, and they, you can just find a trip uh, a trip planner kind of thing. And yeah, you can pay for. I think you can pay for airlines and hotels and rental rental call. Wow. And renter re, and rental <laughs> cars uh, through that website, but uh, I, but uh, you know I, I've never looked into it too much, so don't quote me on that. Sweet. Yeah, I'm. Uh, you got anybody want to go to uh, to Europe? I also see uh, Air yeah, Baltic. Yeah, but I'm poor. <laughs> yeah, yeah that know. happened. Yeah, well, hey, we are poor, so send us money, right? There's a <laughs> yeah, send us donation. There, there's a yeah, there's a tipping address on our website. It, I it's a pretty new one, so it, 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 we used to have a whole a whole different system, but uh, it's a pretty new one. So I and it's not really prominent, so we haven't gotten any that I know of, but it's there if you want to use it. Or if you want to kind of get something in return while you're supporting us, check out you, me, and btc.com slash buy because you can buy Bitcoin. Maybe you can buy it so that you can spend it on these airline tickets in Europe. You could take a trip to Europe, buy Bitcoin uh, from, from, through Wall of Coins, and we'll get supported, and you'll get to go to Europe, and you'll get to spend Bitcoin. Listen, that isn't that's a win-win-win-win-win situation, right? Like, who who could that possibly hurt? <laughs> anyway, you, me, and btc.com slash buy. Anything else on uh, on this one? Cool. Mm. So uh, I'm going to direct people to you, me, and btc.com slash live because, uh, like I said, we have our poll there, and we're about to cover the Carpelli story. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to snag that one next. So um, go there, you, me, and btc.com slash live. Uh, scroll down to near the bottom, and you'll, you'll see our poll. It's in a little gray box. And... Yeah, tell us tell us if you got shocked. Tell us if you if you want to fill in how much you lost, or if you're doing bankruptcy or anything, you can fill in your own answer, or you can just say yes or no, and uh, let us know. Did you get cocks, Daniel? We were talking about this last night, I think. I lost like uh, maybe like five thousand satoshis, so like a few cents. <laughs> what about you? I Jim? think. Yeah, what? actually, did you, John? What about you, John? Yeah, I think I, I think I had like a quarter of a bitcoin in there. Oh okay. dang! Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I just filled I had, in my answer. Go ahead. I had stuff in there because I did like auto trading. Yeah, okay, I remember that. Yeah, I, I do. I remember doing that too. You, I mean, that was that was some of the first ever trading that I did. So I, I didn't make a ton, but it was it was good experience just to learn like, oh, yeah. I'm gonna set an order here, and this is how much I'm gonna sell, and I'm gonna I'm gonna buy it when it drops just a little bit, and then set an order to wait an automatic order really to wait until it goes back up. Yeah, that was that was good experience. You know, yeah. you can make five or five or ten bucks a trade. I think like most of the, uh, I think what I had in there was either. Stuff that I had gotten from trading, or stuff that I had paid for with money that I earned—well, not earned, but like got from price swings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, oh, it yeah, wasn't—it so wasn't like I actually—I don't think I actually lost money, but I—I I don't think I went negative, but I—I I lost right. profit. <laughs> yeah, I could have lost a lot more because I was—I was tempted to transfer because the Mount Gox price was like. What was it like fifty dollars above of any other above any other price, and I was tempted to just move it there and sell it, but the problem is you couldn't really get U.S. dollars out of the system, and luckily, luckily I didn't. So, yeah, I I think actually like I I feel like the only reason I didn't get it out is because I was lazy. Because I feel like I remember us talking about it, like how 
like weird stuff was going on with Gox, and then they froze everybody's accounts, and I was like, dang it, I waited too long. But <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. so if, yeah, let us know your story. You, me, and btc.com slash live. Vote in our poll. It'll be there probably until next Wednesday. So if you're listening to the podcast later uh, or watching the YouTube video later, yeah, head over there and uh, drop a vote and let us know. And we can uh, touch on the results next week, which actually reminds me one more thing before we jump into the Carpelli story. Uh, we did have some more votes from last week's poll. The question was, if people are sending transactions without a fee, is that is that helpful for the network just because people are able to use Bitcoin and they get it to use it for free now and then? Or is it bad for Bitcoin because the miners aren't getting paid? They're providing a service and you're not really supporting them. And uh, one answer that I saw, a, a custom answer that someone filled in was, is one free transaction really going to hurt the miners? And, I mean, to a certain extent, absolutely not, because the the standard fee is probably, I think it's like 0.2 millibits, 0.1 or 0.2 millibits, which is like 3 or 6 cents. Okay, yeah, that's that's nothing. The miner doesn't need that. The only thing is that I'm not sure that's a legitimate response because I'm not talking about one free transaction. I'm, I'm talking about free transactions in general, and I think those do happen relatively often. Any uh, any thoughts, guys? It, is it... Uh, well, I know we talked about the entire question last week, but in terms of one free transaction hurting the miners, is that a fair response, or do you think it's more common? I think it's more common. <laughs> That's what I would expect too. And even if it's not, I think the question is talking about like everybody doing right transactions, or or like the majority of people. Anyway, still, thanks for the answer. And and you're right. I mean, if it really was one, it's it's not even a not even remotely a problem. So. Well, I think the argument that you made during the actual show was that even. If every transaction in there is during a free transaction, it doesn't really hurt too much. That is true too, because at the moment the inflation, uh, the the twenty five Bitcoin reward, is is a gigantic portion of the of the miners' income. So yeah, that's true statement. Anyway, new poll, you me and BTC dot com slash live. Please. Uh, Get over there and vote all the way until next Wednesday. Now, I'm sorry, I've been talking about this for ages. Carpelli's was arrested. Yip -de -de -da. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, I. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's. It made me chuckle, but I, I don't, I don't know if it really helps anything. I mean, it's not like I don't think people are gonna get their money back just because he was arrested. So. You know, it, it. I think it's kind of funny, but uh, I don't know if it's that great. I'll go ahead and read a little bit. This is from uh, ZD.net. Not one that I've heard of before that I can remember, but looks decent. And uh, the author is Charlie Osborne. But I see a picture here, and it looks like a female, so... A female named Charlie Osborne, so it's a she. Former that's, Mt. Gox, go ahead. I know. I was just gonna say that's not that uncommon, but a girl named. Actually, yeah, I, I guess I I can think of at least one or two girls named Charlie. So yeah, you're right. Actually, I I didn't think of that. Come on, Daniel. I right. thought we were trying to be <laughs> feminists or something. Yes, Daniel. Oh yeah. Bitcoin just force them in. Former Mt. Gox CEO Mark Carpellis has been arrested in Tokyo on suspicion of financial fraud. Uh, they go through some of the backstory. He allegedly fiddled with the once dominant Bitcoin exchanges systems in 2013, and this is interesting. If found guilty, could face up to five years in prison 
or a fine of up to 500,000 yen, which is $4,000? Are you kidding me? (laughs) What? Like, I could could afford that. Wow, I wish... (laughs) You wish you had stole $400,000 or whatever it was? I mean, you see all yeah, these, you know, all these laws I, are just saving people, and they're really just doling out justice. Oh no, wait! Right it's four hundred million. Yeah, that, yeah we're, I'm not, I'm not seeing that number here. But if, if you're seeing it, then yeah, four hundred million dollars, and the fine is four thousand dollars. Dang, I got to get into this business. <laughs> it just do wow. it. Make sure you do it in Japan, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My gosh. Uh, because if you do it here, yeah, you'll I'm, get life. <laughs> yeah, probably. You get, you get no, life no, no, no. if you ha- if you sell people a couple of blunts. <laughs> yeah. No, or if you're in the rest. U.S., you, you can do this if you're in the U.S., but you just have to be a banker, and you, you can't be involved in Bitcoin because then you'll get life. But if you're doing it with U.S. dollars, then, then you can do it. You just be a banker. So. <laughs> That's what I'm going for. Anyway. Through. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm seeing 850,000 Bitcoin, which it just it, with some rough math, that seems like the 400 million dollars price is coming from today's numbers. Back then, it probably would have been worth a whole lot more. So, or no, 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 I, I guess I'm not doing it right. My math would be like three million. Anyway, whatever. Too quick and dirty. Still, he stole a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, well, I have an, allegedly, I have an article on that, and it and it says four million. I I don't know how legitimate. It's from the Verge. dot com. Okay. Yeah, it's so actually eight hundred fifty article. Yeah, well, yeah. If there's any good parts worth reading, uh, go for it. Uh, Were you going to say something? Well, just real quick to cover the details. The. Uh, I, actually, that, that, I guess that what I'm trying to say is I'm not really seeing a ton of details about. Well, okay, according to the, according to the former Mt. Gox employee, the Bitcoin exchange's post saga. The Bitcoin exchange post saga is worse than we thought. Barr said within the AMA, uh, that, that's his name. Uh, Barr said within the AMA when asked to become chief executive he tried his best at due diligence and requested a look over the company's financial but Carpelli's wouldn't or feigned that he would do it later all while pressuring me to take the role that the role that's a quote nevertheless Barr and other former employees conducted their own investigation through estimates and guesswork and ascertained the ascertained the model and financials of Mt. Gox didn't quite add up. The expenditures far exceeded every model we had for income. I confronted Mark about it, told him I couldn't take the role if he couldn't explain his gross incompetence in spending. He was also asking employees other than myself to find investors something impossible without knowing the financial status of the company. Around the same time, we learned that Mark only had one bank account shared with Mt. Gox's customer deposits. That was the nail in the coffin. Wow. So his basically his personal account was the same one that was being used for customer funds. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't my article, too. Uh, I might as well finish real quick. There's just a little bit more. While ripping Mt. Gox's corporate innards open, Barr attempted to be fair in his portrayal of the former CEO. Mark was definitely in over his head and didn't have the logic slash communicative skills to know how to ask for help. He desperately needed it but didn't even know it. It was incredibly frustrating. All in all, I felt that Mt. Gox was an RPG to Mark. A rocket propelled propelled grenade, I guess is what he means. Role-playing game. Yeah, but wh- how is it a role-playing... Oh, like just for fun, I guess. Okay. I, I, the reason I was thinking the, the rocket grenade was because maybe it just like, it, it blew him up. But <laughs> either way, yeah, maybe he just saw it as a video game, kind of for fun. Yeah, because uh, I mean, it started as Magic the Gathering, 
right? <laughs> it was built for trading Magic the Gathering cards. So yeah, yeah that he, actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but it, he didn't make it originally. That's what. Oh, you're he right. Bought. Yeah, he bought, he it. bought yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. Else. He didn't quite grasp the reality that the money being deposited into his bank account meant more to other people than just numbers on his screen. Yeah, pretty Wait, crazy. Wait, who's saying that? That was say, the same guy, an employee, was saying that he didn't realize... Like, like it was a video game to him, an RPG. He just didn't, he didn't realize how serious it was. Wait, is the employee saying about, him, about himself or about Carpelli's? About Carpelli's. How is that an excuse? What, I mean, is that an excuse, or what is that? No, no. This, this, it's, it's a whistleblower. Okay. I mean, he's the guy who exposed him in the first place, but he it does okay. say, this is this is the author of the article, but he's saying Barr attempted to be fair in his portrayal of the former CEO. So, okay. yeah, he exposed all this stuff, but, you know, he's like, well, to be fair, Mark, it, it, was, it was a pretty crazy time, and Mark didn't know what was going on, so... I mean, I, I still think he deserves to. I I, I don't know. I, I don't like. I mean, I I don't know if the state is the right entity to to handle. I mean, a four thousand dollar fine, like whatever. But I I definitely think he made some gigantic mistakes. So. So I I, I think he deserves some kind of repercussions. I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, there's. Uh, We've had some really interesting discussions about the state in general and what's okay and not okay. And, and, and obviously we've been talking about this since episode one, but I mean even the, in the past two or three weeks, we've kind of had some new and interesting ideas and, and conversations, maybe not so much on the podcast, although a little bit. Anyway, but yeah, what do you guys, what do you guys think he deserves? I mean, is it okay for the state to go after him? Is there some other way that we could punish him in a, in a more free way? Is it okay to punish him? I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, so I guess I'll, I'll talk about the article I had a little bit. And and the yeah, reason yeah, I have this article is I thought it was kind of hilarious. The, it's, it's pretty – it seems pretty anti-Bitcoin, the whole thing. They're like it's exactly because it's decentralized that this happened. Normal – currencies would have to go through so much regulation that something like this would never happen and all this stuff and like the the title of the article is Mount Gox was Bitcoin's ugliest success story and basically they say that like Bitcoin was only fun as something where things like this happen and that like this whole story and Mark Carpelli's are like like the the representation of Bitcoin or something, which is huh. kind of, like I guess I'll I'll read near the end what it says. If you aren't a true believer, then you might think we've already seen Bitcoin's peak. In that case, Carpelli starts to look like one of the most important players in the whole drama, the perfect representation of what Bitcoin meant for those years while the world still cared about it. And then at the end, he's like. Um, of course, the dream ended up costing Gox's customers a lot of money, but that only makes it more important. Anyone can lose a, fo a few million on today's web, but losing 400 million takes vision, <laughs> which <laughs> I think is pretty funny. But all, overall, I think the guy in the article is kind of... It's, like, really sensationalistic and stuff. Like, this happened two years ago, and yeah. we're still... Got Wrong. Like, I don't know how anyone can say... I, I don't know what he even brought it up. It sounds like an article that should have been written two years ago <laughs> with how, like, well, freaked out he is. And the, and the stuff about, like, the reason this happened is because it's decentralized. I guess I get what he's saying. Like, in a way, that's true, but that's a price that you pay for having things be free. And, and the other side of the coin is that when... When this happens, life goes on, and like when a bank fails, it just like life doesn't go on. No, because you have to keep <laughs> on trying to save it, so you just put more and more money into it while it dies. Yeah, and and when it does die, everyone who's not dependent on 
you can't choose to not be dependent on a bank. So, like, when a bank fails, you have no recourse. You can choose to not be dependent on Mt. Gox. It was never... Yeah. And that's the thing that, I guess, especially at the time, a lot of people didn't realize. But, like, Bitcoin and Mt. Gox really... They weren't inseparable. And when Mt. Gox failed, everybody got out who could, and no one uses Mt. Gox anymore, and it's still, like, Bitcoin still goes on. It didn't really change Bitcoin in any other way besides people's perception of it, maybe. Right. Well, first first of all, I like your point about people got out. I mean, there were a ton of warning signs, and that's, that's why yeah. I got out. Yeah, it's funny. In the article, he's like, either people... Either there was no way for people to know this was going to happen because there wasn't regulation, so like they had they had no way of figuring out that something was going wrong, or the people that did know something was going wrong didn't say anything, and I don't remember that to be the case at all. Yeah, when it was happening. Um, yeah, I mean, there were not only were there warning signs in the weeks and months before, but even you know, six, you know, four, six, eight months earlier, they. They had issues. They went down. They, they. It was not a perfect company, and people knew that. So, so, so here's the thing. So, to a certain extent, that says, okay, if anybody lost money, you know, to a certain extent, it's your own fault because, it, it, you know, you trusted them, and and that's something that you got to live with. But are you saying then that is is that kind of your way of saying that he doesn't really? deserve much of a punishment other than we don't like you or yeah so I didn't I guess I didn't really get to that part but like <laughs> uh, it's one of those things where if he ever tries to do anything again people are just going to laugh at him like I, I don't know if you need any more punishment than that I mean I guess maybe but but like his whatever kind of reputation he might have had is completely gone Whatever yeah, kind of trust yeah. he might have had is completely gone. Right, and that and that fits pretty well, I think, with the liberty mindset as well. I mean, when somebody does stupid shit, one of the biggest slights you can give them is just a bad reputation, right? I mean, it's just people know who did it. People know that you made mistakes, and so you're not really going to get much farther in in life. I, I mean... That's tough, though, because, you know, he probably could, right? I mean, he probably could. Well, first of all, if he stole stuff, he might still have it. But even then, I mean, yeah, I feel like I, feel like I could see people trying to use his services again. I don't know. Mm, yeah, I guess if, if people really don't pay attention to anything or they're not... I, I feel like you'd have to be completely disconnected from anyone else in, in Bitcoin to, like, not be able to figure out that you shouldn't trust right. this guy too much. But it's funny, the guy in the article was like, nothing, like, the only way this got fixed is when the state intervened. He actually said something almost exactly like that in the in the article. I don't, let's see if I can find it real quick. Uh, yeah, it was like, they were. He says that like even when problems were discovered, the decentralized nature made it difficult to drive them home, and uh, the marketplace couldn't fix Mount Gox. Where is it? But see, the marketplace I think did fix Mount Gox. I mean, they they were gone. I mean, people were stopping. You, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe not enough, but people really were backing out. And if if the state didn't step in and and they they didn't go bankrupt. You know, people would have noticed that they weren't getting their money, and then Mount Gox would have been done anyway. Yeah, it's, it says in the end, Gox's customers didn't know how badly they'd been taken until state power intervened. So that's I I don't know how you can say that, but but yeah. the I think the funniest thing about all of this is like what happens when the state power intervenes? He gets fined four thousand dollars. <laughs> well, like, yeah, so uh, yeah. I mean, everyone gets their money back somehow. Right. Well, that that's a good point. But also, it. I don't know if it. I don't even really know if you can say that that state 
that that it was the state's intervention previously because them going bankrupt the, the state didn't make yeah. them go the state oh, yeah. didn't go after them until this week so really the marketplace did drive them out because they went bankrupt and then nobody used Mt. Gox anymore because they yeah. couldn't so yeah, and, that and had nothing you know, to do with the state everyone should know how much money they lost if they didn't know how much money they had in there that's kind of a problem yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but maybe I think maybe what he means is that like nobody understood the total damage but that, in a sense, that doesn't matter. I mean, it matters because it makes what he did worse because he lost so much money. But as far as knowing whether you yourself made a bad decision, you don't need to know the total damage. And if you didn't know how much money you had in there, you have other issues. Yep, I agree. Tim, I, I haven't heard much from you. Any thoughts on what he deserves or how he should be punished? I'm not so much for punishing this. I more for people who lost their money getting their money back. I mean, I lost probably about as yeah. much as you did, Daniel. I only lost a few cents because I've been, I've been out of Mount Docks for a while. Whenever they had already shut down, I think I was out since they stopped letting you take, take cash out. I think something like that because I was trading on it before, but uh, yeah, I didn't have much in there, so it's not like a problem with me, but. I don't well, see how, do how you, I'm supposed. Do you see that happening though? I mean, how how would we go happened. about that? Getting our money back? Like what? No, it's not going to happen. They don't give a fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say that. It's just about saying like you broke a law. We're going to do this and this, and we're going to punish you. I, mean, I don't care if he gets punished. Yeah, I, mean, I like what John's saying. He's already not going to make any kind of business after this unless people just don't remember it all. Yeah, and I don't care if he goes to prison. Like that doesn't. It doesn't. Doesn't yeah, help. It doesn't, it doesn't help anyone. I, I care. I I like think it's funny that he can't really do anything. He he probably won't be able to ever do anything again. I think that's kind of funny, and I guess like he deserves it. Not that like a punishment helps me. And yeah, I agree with Tim. I'd rather than anything people get their money back. And I actually feel like as soon as the state intervenes, there's less chance that you get your money back. Yeah, I know that four thousand dollars. Even if they did fine him that, the max. This, we're not going to get any of that. Yeah, and and exactly. like, what happens? What is the point of that? What is the point of asking him four thousand dollars? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't understand that at all. Unless they're already taking the rest of his money, or something. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, what what happens like in the U.S. if somebody robs a convenience store or something? Do, does like do they pay back the convenience store, or does the guy just well, go to prison? I mean, yeah. I'm sure the uh, the owner could the owner could press charges kind of in a civil suit and say you damaged me or my property so you owe me x y and z. I mean I'm sure that could happen but yeah you have to sue. You don't like it right. part of it isn't just getting the money back which like yeah. of course that would make the most sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what happened? Crazy. Wait, I had a question. Um <laughs> like there was something about uh, the people getting paid back. Oh, what's going on with the suits against him? Like the the individual like the bankruptcy. Trying... Yeah, I, I think it's just people. it's just bogged down in in bankruptcy. I mean, I okay. think they are going through the technically legal correct proceedings and everything, but I mean, it doesn't. Uh, that's not going to help people either. I mean, they they'll liquidate. Everything that Mount Gox owns, probably, and and you'll get what probably like eight or ten cents on the dollar. I, I mean, I don't know that for sure, but that's what I would guess. Okay. But yeah, it's just it's like and it's gonna be slow. I mean, it's already been a few years, and it's just we are going through proceedings. Someday you might get money back. <laughs> like, yeah, I still get emails from like the bankruptcy stuff. Yeah, occasionally get them. Yeah, and uh, I got some physical mail at one point. I also <laughs> remember a while ago something about selling the Mount Gox domain name, mountgox.com. I don't know. I don't know what all happened there. We but should buy it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, get the. It, it would be interesting. The only thing is, I don't want to give. Well, I guess in that case, if it was part of the liquidation. 
the money would actually go to people that lost money. So if I could afford it, I actually I would be some semi interested just to support the people that lost money and to get an interestingly valuable domain name, but I'm sure I couldn't afford it. So So give us money. <laughs> because we're poor. Yes, but no, we won't I mean, steal, we will not we will not use your money to start up an incredibly well, ill conceived <laughs> yeah, uh, we're not going to start Mount Cox too. No, here's the thing. I, I, I'm not going to try and say that we need the money because we don't. I mean, we we're, we're yes, fine. We you know, our pellets. I need that money as much as anyone else does, Daniel. I don't need it. But I will say, but I will say that it does mean a whole lot. No, you know, we absolutely appreciate the support. If if you if you if you're able to donate Bitcoin straight up, cool. If you'd rather support us by uh, using our our wall of coins widget, or pretty soon, I know we've been saying this forever, but pretty soon we'll have commercial free stuff hopefully. And if you want to support that way and get something in return, we seriously do appreciate it a whole lot. I mean, we we can't tell you how much it means to have to have a little bit of income those ways. But to take that even a step further, if you don't want to give us money, we still absolutely appreciate any kind of support. If it's tweets, if it's uh, comments on the website, if it's if it's clicking the little share buttons. Uh, w with our new podcast host that I was sort of talking about, we have uh, uh, there's a little heart button on every episode. If you click that, it'll probably boost us up the list a little bit, get us more exposure. Every bit of interaction. Absolutely appreciate it. Means a lot, and 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 that stuff we do need. I mean, it depends how you define need. But if if you want us to keep going, if you want us to grow and spread and reach people, that kind of stuff we do need. So and it, and it doesn't cost you anything. Just click a few buttons. So, or or in Tim's case, I don't know. Maybe he does need the money because maybe I don't know. For all I know, he's living on the street right now. So. Yeah, I need it for the lot. Yeah, I know. That's why. That's why he always has to use my house because he's living on the street, right? <laughs> yeah, I just haven't seen me in my house for a little bit, so. Yeah, because you don't have a house anyway. Uh, place to be: youmeandbtc.com/live. You can watch there, listen there. You can tweet us there. Like I said, we love the tweets. Uh, we got one tweet requesting a sticker from Josh or at StarSoccer9. So definitely thanks for that. We, we always appreciate that. Uh, I want to do another quick shout-out to, uh, what was the name, Cyril? Uh, I'm not, I think it was Cyril1, C-Y-R-I-L-1. Or no, it was one Cyril. Blanc, B L A N C one. So it's hard to say, but we've gotten tons of tweets from him. It's been great. Uh, at Enjoy Bitcoins, uh, we might be doing some extra uh, promotion stuff with him soon. But either way, we've we've gotten some cool retweets from him. We love it. So thanks for all that. Uh, anyway, so you can tweet us at youmeandbtc.com/slash live. We just finished up the Gox story, so yeah, if you want to vote in our poll, tell us if you got lo if you got goxed, uh, how much you lost or whatever. Go ahead and share that; we love it. And uh, another thing that I should mention is about regarding the audio player on that page. I mean, I wrote this right below the audio player, but I heard from I heard from Star Soccer Nine that. He didn't read it, and that's uh, that's okay because I'm 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 guessing there's a lot of people out there that aren't going to read the paragraph explaining how the audio player works. So I'm just going to say this real quick. It's gonna, if if we're not live, it's going to show our latest episode, and there's also a button there that you can click to see a whole list of episodes, and you can just select one and play it. If we are live, then it'll show the. Uh, It'll show the live stream, and you can just click play. And you you shouldn't have to refresh. If you're on the page and we go live, it should automatically show you the new episode. So, uh, and then one last thing is what the heck? Well, oh, also regarding the radio stream, I we're not going to start early or end late anymore. I don't think just because as soon as I hit the stop button, 
that audio becomes a podcast. So it's the old one. The old one, the audio wasn't recorded; it was pulled from YouTube. So the radio stream could be whatever, and then it's just gone. With this case, it's uh, it's going to become a podcast as soon as we start the recording and stop the recording. So I don't want the extra stuff. But I don't know. I, I don't know. What do you guys think? It, would it be worth including it and leaving it, or I could also include it for the live stream? And then within an hour or two after the show, I could cut that stuff and re-upload it. Any thoughts? Is it is it worth doing the extra extra audio at the beginning and end? Uh, I don't know. You have to ask the people. People, yes. tell us what you Actually, want. Actually, really good point. Us. Really good point. So throughout the next week, whenever you listen to this, uh, Star Soccer, I know you're listening. Let us know if you want the extra audio. He kind of already said that he when I he was skyping me and he said uh, he said that when I told him that we weren't doing the extra audio he sent a frowny face so I don't know maybe uh, maybe maybe he does want it but everyone else let us know too send us a tweet at you me and BTC let us know if you want the extra audio cool all right uh, let's see if we're going in a circle that brings us back to Tim so. Tim, give us something absolutely crazy, something that will blow your mind. Oh, one more thing. If you want a sticker, there's still two left. I'll ship them out to you for free. Uh, tweet to at you, me, and BTC. Just ask us for a sticker. Anytime during the week, too, there might be some left. I'm not sure. So if you're listening later, send us a tweet, and we'll let you know. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, this is a... And drop, drop a link, too. Oh, there it's it is. Go ahead, Tim. Uh, it's from Scotland, of course, because the police didn't automatically shoot the man whenever they talked to him, so it couldn't have been here. But um, Bitcoin trader in Scotland, I don't know how long ago. The article is pretty recent whenever he had it. But they took his money. They've been investigating him. It was with some laws that had to do with what they normally use for drug, uh, drug dealers where they say they don't have actual evidence to to arrest the person, but they have enough intelligent uh, ideas or whatever that means to just take their money, I guess, <laughs> to seize their money. <laughs> so we had about uh, 5,000 or 5,500 pounds in, in it from his bank account stolen. I'm not sure if it was in Bitcoin or if it was in pounds at that time. Uh, but he went to the bank. Uh, he's he's a Bitcoin trader. He went to the bank and he was trying to make a withdrawal. And then the police stopped him. And they said they told him they he wasn't under arrest, but they're taking his money. Uh, but then recently he got his money back. I don't know how much of it uh, or how much he he lost about twelve hundred pounds in legal fees. So that's still shitty, but. He, I, I'm surprised they returned it to him, but I guess they couldn't really find anything wrong with what he was doing. So yeah, the uh, oh, it's the proceeds of crime act. That's what it was taken under, which is yeah, where they don't really need evidence. I guess that you're doing something, they just have to think and be like, oh, he probably is. <laughs> I'm sure they don't always use it like that, but I could. It seems like it's one of those things that just like a catch-all, where it's like we'll just make this a law so that we can kind of just take anyone we want because well, it's hard for us to do our job, and you can't get in the way of police catching criminals. I know they they work so hard, and yeah, no, it's, it's uh, too difficult to find this. So Lazy it look, yeah, bastards. Go, Daniel. <laughs> it. Estimate somebody, the trader, estimates he lost approximately 1,200 euros or pounds. I think they're pounds. Yeah. Uh, of his original 5,500 pounds in legal fees. So I'm guessing that means that he got roughly 3,500 back, if, if, if that's what that means. I'm not 100% sure. But, yeah, I mean, I guess... I mean, it's it's dumb that they took it in the first place, but sure, I guess why not be happy that he got it back, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad he got it, at least some of it back. I hope. 
I'm not. Uh, never mind. <laughs> is there anything like that could, that could happen here? Well, it depends how you define could happen. Of course, it could. I mean, I mean, they'll they'll take stuff anytime they want. But if you mean legally, uh, I mean, there's like the Patriot Act. If you're if they think you're doing terrorism, then they could probably freeze your accounts and everything. What if civil forfeiture too? Forgot What's that? that? I forgot about that. You can also like if about you're what? Drunk, <laughs> civil forfeiture and how they can if you're caught. If they pull you over and you have any certain amount of money, and they'll be like, "Why do you have this?" And you're like, oh, "I'm going to buy a car, or I'm going to buy a house." Or oh, like this. yeah. And they're like, "No, it's for drugs. Give it to us." And they can yeah, just but... take it, and even if you're proven innocent, you don't. Unless you go through like a bunch of court battles, you don't necessarily get it back. Any of it. Yeah, that's total BS. If you have cash in your car and you get pulled over, yeah, they just take it. That is, yeah. If I never heard of that. You're not under arrest, but we're still going to take your money because we suspect something. And because and then, it's not... They... It, they never charge the person with something, so it's not like the person can be like, can I have my money back? Because it's never... Yeah, it's that's, just that's like a weird limbo to... thing. I think. That's what I was about to ask, like if they could ever get it back. But yeah, if they don't charge them, then they, they can't really be acquitted, so they can't be like, oh, I'm innocent, now I get my money back. <laughs> so yeah, that's total bullshit, yeah. I, I don't know I don't know about the technicalities. I, I might have been wrong in saying that they can take your cash anytime they pull you over. There's probably some legal language about probable cause or whatever and it's, it's if they, if they think, find that much money. It's not like for some reason I don't know why you're telling them that you have ten thousand dollars in the car if they're not already searching. But if you have <laughs> yeah. a decent amount of money, it's not like a probable cause thing. It's not like, oh, he has uh some kind of drug paraphernalia out. It's just that you have that much money, and it's. I understand why it's like a red flag. Most people don't drive around with ten thousand dollars, but the idea then that you, it's worse than being under arrest. Then, like, because what we're saying is that then you don't know what exactly yeah, is happening. Have, right. Thankfully, you the don't, stars when you can get it back. It, yeah. Yeah, crazy. But this guy got at least a little bit back, so that's cool. Keep it up. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't, don't keep it up because keeping it up involves, involves continuing to... No, I'm talking to the police. Oh, okay. Keeping it up, if, if you were going to keep returning people's money, that means you're also continuing to take people's money. So I don't want that, but anything you have, give it back, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll do another happy story if you, if you keep doing that. Yeah, we'll tell all about good stuff police do. Um, you think he's going to go back to trading still? Uh, good question. If it was me, I mean, I I probably, whew, this is dangerous territory, but I'm not going to be afraid. <laughs> if it was me, uh, I would try and go back. I would just be more careful. I would just keep it more secret, maybe. I don't know. I would almost think that he doesn't have to worry about it as much hey, anymore. A, a yeah. side they note. Didn't, they didn't I, I, even know I, the hey. Bitcoin trade. A real quick side note, I just want to say hello to all my jurors because I know that this video is going to be played back in court someday and I just want to give a quick shout out to everybody that's uh, that's listening to this video in court right now. Uh, look, read up on jury nullification. Uh, it's a real thing. It's completely legal and uh, check it out. So anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. All right, what were you saying, Tim? Uh, uh, that, about yeah, I would think that he wouldn't have to be worried about it as much because they didn't even know that he was a Bitcoin trader. Like th There was literally very little work put into this, it seems like. Yeah. Because they're like, yeah, that could why be don't right. you just Google me? I'm a Bitcoin trader. So I would think that like now he wouldn't have to worry about it, hopefully, because now the police would be like, oh, he's trading it. That is until Scotland makes some kind of ruling on it that it has to be regulated to. Yeah. I, uh, I also... That little shout out there, you know it's going to get cut, so they're not going to hear it anyway. But uh, definitely the judge should come home and fist himself with a shotgun and then pull the trigger. Wait, did you say fist himself with a shotgun? Yes. Uh, How do you fist yourself with a shotgun? I don't know. I was choosing the wrong words in this cup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. Hell of a dude. 
All right. Well, uh, cool. Anything else on that, or should we move on? All right. I guess that means we turn it over to John. Uh, as far uh, yeah. as I know, I'm not in any other tweets, so stickers are still available, at least two. I don't know. Maybe I'll give out more. No clue. But uh, send us a tweet and ask for a sticker at you, me, and BTC. And one other thing, check out youmeandbtc.com slash buy. Uh, you can try out Genitrust and Wall of Coins. We have a little widget right there. And if you use it on our website, you can get uh, you can buy Bitcoin with cash super quick. You don't even have to make an account. You can finish today. You can walk away with thousands of dollars worth of Bitcoin without ever creating an account. And you'll be supporting us, and we'll get a little cut. So uh, that would mean a whole lot, and and uh, we'd love you forever, which we already do, but we'll love you a little bit more than everyone else forever. So <laughs> you, me, and btc.com slash buy. All right, go ahead, John. All right, this is a report that was just published by BitPay yesterday. You can find it on blog.bitpay.com. It's called Bitcoin, a New Global Economy. And this is a report about the state of Bitcoin, I guess, in the last uh, year and a half, uh, at least as far as BitPay is concerned. And uh, you could say they're a pretty big deal. Uh, they have some graphs on here, which are pretty interesting. And it's so as as the title said, it's global. It's a global report, and the, the first graph, I guess, is probably the most interesting one to talk about, and it shows the quarterly transactions by region. Uh, we've got Europe on there, North America, Latin America, and Asia Pacific, and um, they make a point out of saying that actually for the first uh, few quarters that are displayed in the graph, Europe and North America are pretty even. And then uh, Europe just has a, a spike right at the end. They've gone up a lot, and that could be... I guess that would like include Greece and stuff, right? So maybe maybe that, or I guess there's just been a lot of stuff going on in Europe lately. Right, yeah, just general... But, yeah. Not really panic, but just worrisome and stuff. Yeah, and, and the North America one actually is pretty... It just flattens out, I guess, where Europe goes up, which is not... A uh, terrible thing, I guess. It's been pretty consistent, it looks like, over the past year and a half. And then Latin America and Asia Pacific both uh, increased, especially Latin America. They have a, uh, a more close-up picture of the Latin American graph lower down, and it's uh, what they call hockey stick growth. It's pretty low at the beginning, and it exponentially goes up right at yeah, the end. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah, Latin America is is it shot up in the last two or three quarters. Yeah, so it, they they said um there's a lot of stuff in like Argentina and uh well, I guess all the countries down there, the the currencies that are government sanctioned are not super stable or useful and the population doesn't have a whole lot of access to regular like banks and stuff like that. So that's I guess why why they've been going up, and I would assume that's a similar thing for the Asian Pacific. But um, an another interesting thing, just a little factoid at the bottom, they have the top twenty countries by number of merchants, and as of now, less than one third of the merchants are now located in the U.S., which is a pretty big deal, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that same and same thing with the graph we were just looking at. It it is surprising. I mean, Europe is way ahead of North America at this point, and uh, I, I'd say about fifty percent higher in terms of transaction volume uh, for the last quarter. And that's uh, interesting. I mean, I, I kind of wish North America was was ahead, but I'll take Europe too. <laughs> yeah. So I'm get. I mean, this is. As far as I understand, only Bitcoin transact or BitPay transaction volume. It's only right, right. transactions that they've processed. So it's not, um, it's not the whole story. But BitPay is a big company, 
and a lot of merchants, a lot of more regular everyday commercial merchants use Bitcoin or BitPay. BitPay. I need to stop saying Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, and then uh, so so I guess the there's still a lot of important information in these graphs. And then at the bottom they have a uh, top industries, which is another oh, kind wow. of interesting graph. IT services are number one. Number two is other, which is <laughs> it's kind of funny, I guess. I'm not sure what all that includes. But, yeah, marketplaces are next, and then financial services, and last are gift cards. Gift cards yeah. are 1%. I was going to say, it's kind of weird that they actually have a different category for gift cards. It's not just in other, but 9% is a pretty large percentage f just for gift cards. Right. I'm guessing the biggest one would be like, um, uh, what's it called? Gift. G Y F T. Yeah. Because they they've been around for a while and doing Bitcoin gift cards, and I'm guessing that's a decent portion of it. Eh, yeah. But yeah, there could be others. So. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, it. I mean, this is kind of we we talked about this at the very beginning of the show. I was asking with regards to Australia, and will they? If they recognize Bitcoin more, more, uh, will more people get into Bitcoin? And and uh, it's kind of the same idea here, where I can use Bitcoin. I like using Bitcoin, and I don't need other people to use Bitcoin. So this kind of growth is is not something I really need. But heck, I mean, I, that doesn't mean I don't like it. it. Doesn't mean I won't take it. I'm I'm glad to see that. That other people are are using it for real transactions. So, yeah. So I I read the fine print. Well, it's not the fine print. It's actually the regular print. I just didn't read it. <laughs> but the the other merchant types on the graph, which make up twenty two point nine percent of of BitPay's graph. Uh, comprises a broad range of retailers, enabling Bitcoin owners to spend their coins on everything from high-end watches to charity donations. So that actually includes donations, which is cool. And they said also 2.2 to 3% of the total transaction volume is spent in the gaming industry. Oh, that's kind of cool. And it makes sense uh, having... I mean, gaming is you know online and digital and everything, and yeah, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. I still uh I, I I've been I've been mulling over this idea for a long time for months really but I cannot wait uh, well I can't wait for someone else to create it I wish I could create it myself I don't really have the skills but one thing that I desperately want to see is a is a video game like a like a role playing game uh, where uh, where Bitcoin is the in-game currency, and you can deposit and withdraw at will. I, I've seen one game like that. It was like a 3D RPG, but uh, it was a gambling game, and and it was you know it was decently well done. But I I would just like to see something bigger. And uh, my original idea was Minecraft because you can build servers and and add all kinds of plugins to Minecraft. I I think it would be awesome to have a Minecraft server where Bitcoin was the in-game currency. Oh, that'd be so much fun. And I wish I could do it, but holy crap. Time is extremely limited, and, and, and my skills are uh, would take take a while to, to get to that point, too. So if anybody's out there, it's a free idea, and we will support you all the way if it... Uh, if you if it looks like a good idea, just let us know and uh, and I don't know we can support you any way we can. So at least I will. I don't know what do you, what do you guys think? Would you play a game like that? Well, it just matters if I'd be. I I don't think I would spend that much money on yeah, a game. I yeah. pretty much only play games if they're free. No, but I don't no, care no, no, how no, that's what. That's the whole point, though, is if it's the in-game currency, you could also make money, right? I mean, you make money in other games. You could make money and withdraw it as Bitcoin, depending on your skill and how much time you put in, maybe, and stuff like that, right? Yeah, but I don't want to... Like, I play games to get away from the real world. 
I don't. Yeah, but you can't. What if if you could get away from the world and make money? Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> I'd still have to be worried about losing it, and I, I don't think you're just gonna like make tons of money. I don't think it ever would be that easy. I uh, I actually got another message from Star Soccer, uh, Josh, and I I do vaguely remember seeing something like this before. He said the Minecraft idea has already been done, and I think that's pretty cool. I, I would want to know the details, like how many people use it, how secure is it, can you actually profit by playing? Uh, I'm not sure. He sent me a link. This is from... Uh, looks like the end of 2014, so it's it's been around for a while, and and it might be worth trying out. You can buy food, armor, and even enchanted weapons. But oh, but you can also mine in Minecraft and get Bitcoin, I believe. So that's pretty cool. Each emerald is worth one bit. And yeah, it looks like you can withdraw it to Zappo. Huh, interesting. Anyway, we, we don't need to get into all of that now. I'll be checking it out, and I what I really want to do is improve upon it and do it for myself, and maybe I can profit the most by running the game, and other people can play and spend a bunch of money on it, and I'll get rich. I don't know. <laughs> or, uh, Tim, we could make like a browser-based game like Travian, where you just... You don't need graphics that much, but, uh, you know. Yeah, and then we'll just start charging for it so that it just makes it so you have to pay it. No, 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 no. I, I don't, that's the whole point, though. I don't want to charge for it. Well, I, I do, have... and I really don't care what you want. I want money out of this. <laughs> I know. Listen, well, I'm getting there. Shut the thing. fuck up. The way you would make money... Listen, this is a classic concept in all RPGs. You have faucets and you have sinks. Faucets are places where people can, you can fish and you get fish and then you sell the fish and you get money. It's, it's free money. Or you can play a game and you, get, you win a little bit of money. Those are faucets. There's also sinks like, hey, I need to sell armor. I need to sell food. People spend Bitcoin on the armor and the food. And traditionally, you kind of keep those balanced. You, you have the same amount of money coming out of the faucets as you have going into the sinks. But if you designed it right, you could have a little, like, people would be putting Bitcoin in by themselves, and so you could suck a little bit of that out with the sinks. That's how you would charge for it. You wouldn't have to get make them pay to play. You would let them put their own money in, and you would sink it away from them. Anyway. <laughs> how about, how about really... you guys, how about you, somebody just pays me, and then, like, every few days or when you accomplish a task, I'll just run into your house and I'll throw, like, I'll take, like, a board and I'll just write a new number on it. I'll say you advance a level, and then you just pay me for that. How about that? No, it has to be fun, Tim. I'm not going to do that. RPGs aren't that much fun. RPGs... That's the... Actually, actually, you're right. A big part of the reason people do that... Level 5! I mean, I get it too. Believe me, if I'm ever playing that and it's like level 5, I'm like, oh my god, I just got, oh, and then I'm like, wait, why am I so no, happy? I mean, I mean, that is a good point that people will, uh, the part of the reason they pay money and they spend hours and hours is not really it, it, because it's fun. I mean, I mean, people call it grinding. They just do it <laughs> over and over and over just because the level up is really they like it. They they like that dopamine. And yeah. we could do that too, though, Tim. We could implement that. We could let people not not necessarily pay directly, but they could deposit Bitcoin and use it in the game to become better. And uh, and then we'll keep it. So <laughs> and we'll give we'll give about ten percent of it back through the faucets just to keep them entertained and and help out the newbies. And uh, then we'll keep the rest. So. Anyway, all right. Wow, that all came from. That's all because Bit, uh, BitPay said uh, the the two to three percent of Bitcoin transactions are in the gaming industry, which uh, I don't know. That was a fun conversation, though. And I, I seriously, I'm not. I'm not even remotely joking. I really do want to do that. And I really, if I can find the time, I absolutely would try. Uh, so keep an eye out for that sometime in the next ten years, and maybe I'll find time. <laughs> <laughs> the next. Ten. Anyway. When you All right, cool. That kind of time frame on it. I don't think it's happening. <laughs> I know that—that that was my point. Like, it's—I uh, 
I don't know if it ever will, but I absolutely want it to. Uh, anyway, where was I? So we were on BitPay. Anything else about BitPay and transaction volumes? I mean, we, we're seeing growth, and that's pretty cool. So Nice. All right, well, uh, the place to be right now is you, me, and btc.com slash live. You can watch there. You can listen to the live stream. And like I said, it's a new live stream, and there is a chat box uh, built into it somehow. I don't know if you can see it on our website or if you have to go to Spreaker, but I'm not seeing any chat there. Uh, and you can tweet us on that web page. Uh, definitely, we're up for uh, any uh, tweets, uh, questions, comments, uh, Bitcoin headlines. If you have an idea for a video game that we could build that has Bitcoin as the in-game currency, if you want to write us some poetry, anything you'd like to tweet us, absolutely welcome. We have a tweet here from Enjoy Bitcoins. He says, good afternoon, fellas. Uh, good afternoon to you, too. Thanks for good being here. And uh, I owe you an email, Enjoy Bitcoins. I've owed you an email for at least a week now. I will try to get that out within a day or two and uh, see what we can work out. Hey, if anybody wants a sticker, Enjoy Bitcoins, or anyone else, it, there's at least two left. Uh, at least two. Yeah, maybe I'll give out more. I don't know. But if you want a free sticker, completely free, I'll send it to you, and I'll pay the postage and all that. Uh, send us a tweet and just let us know that you want a sticker. Tweet to at you, me, and BTC, and just ask, and it's yours. Uh, cool. So that wraps around back to me. And I have a story. It's actually a Reddit post, but it's uh, pretty interesting. Apparently, somebody was... Finding ways. Oh, I'll drop a link because I always know you. I tell you guys too, and I harass you when you don't drop a link. So here it comes. Apparently, somebody he says he is a developer or no, a security researcher in Central Europe. And yesterday, August fourth, he was able to spoof transactions through blockchain.info. So here's the thing. They were not legitimate transactions. He did not push them through through the real Bitcoin network, but apparently blockchain.info has some kind of API, and they were uh, he was able to push a transaction with a completely fake hash, and blockchain accepted it. it not the real network. It was just blockchain set on their website oh, this transaction happened. And that's uh, pretty risky. There's a bunch of comments here, and people are saying that they're working on fixes and stuff. But, yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty crazy that they can do that. And here's the thing. I like blockchain.info a lot. I use it for a couple things here and there. But I will say, I mean, this is not the first time that they've had issues. I've heard some eh, sketchy stuff about them before. I don't I don't I wouldn't even remotely say that they're like Mt. Gox. I, I wouldn't even remotely say that they're gonna run away with your money. The bigger thing I'd be concerned about is just, you know, like like this. They might have spoofed transactions, they might they might not represent information correctly. And uh, you know, it's just something to be careful of. Another thing that we've talked about ages ago, I mean probably the first ten or twenty episodes is when we mentioned this for our regular podcast. But we talked about kind of centralization in, in blockchain.info. There are a lot of people out there who, instead of running their own Bitcoin node, they just ask blockchain.info. You know, you know, in a not they don't physically ask them, they, they do it with their programs and everything, but they they rely on blockchain.info to to pay. Uh, when money has come in or gone out or whatever, and the, that you know that's okay, but the problem is so many people do it, and if something goes wrong like this spoofing or if blockchain gets hacked, then you might be fed false information that doesn't really that's not really on on the Bitcoin blockchain, but it is showing up on blockchain.info, 
and it uh, it's not really something that you should trust and and a lot of people do it so it's just something to be careful about uh, do you guys remember talking about any of that I mean I, I think it was a long time ago <clears throat> I, I don't really remember okay. talking about that. Yeah. I, it's possible okay. that I wasn't even there. I mean, that's true, too. So, Anyway, any thoughts on uh, the security? Any thoughts on if they might fix it? I don't know, anything at all? Did you read through, see any good details? I'd assume that they'd try to fix it, at least as long as they actually are paying attention and... But yeah, I mean, this is this is the thing. Anytime it's it's just the trust thing. It comes up with everybody. At some point, you have to trust people, and it's just who you trust. And people are gonna make mistakes. And yeah, I I use I use blockchain dot info fairly frequently. I wouldn't say all the time, but I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, their wallet services. I would say are more more trustworthy because blockchain really doesn't have any access to your funds, at least theoretically. Uh, but I also know that people can analyze probably most of the code, and I think it's I think it would be fair to say that blockchain does not have access to 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 funds in their wallets. The bigger issue is just the API or even even their regular website like you go you can type in an address and see if how much money is there and what transactions are going on and the issue is that you might see transactions on blockchain.info that are not on the actual bitcoin blockchain and so yeah it's like you said it's a trust thing and if you do trust them fine or may, what you could do is maybe trust them to a certain extent just to improve efficiency but then as you go, just kind of keep an eye on things and verify things in other ways and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, it's trust. You know, we, we've, we've brought this up quite a bit recently. Trust is necessary, but, you know, it's, there's always trade-offs and different ways of doing things, and you just got to be careful. So, yeah, but, but, yeah, hopefully they do fix it soon. Oh, and another thing, the... Uh, one of the one of the, part of the reason that this became a drama was because the transactions that he spoofed were from those really really old addresses that people think are Satoshi's addresses where he has I don't know probably hundreds and hundreds or thousands of bitcoins and he spoofed a transaction from one of those addresses where it had tons of coins and they hadn't moved in forever and people thought that it was Satoshi kind of becoming active and maybe doing something bitcoins and uh, I don't know it kind of surprised a lot of people and I don't the guy even said something about like I'm sorry I did not mean to cause any harm to the Bitcoin community and uh, yeah so any uh, any other thoughts? I, it looks like this was generally well received. I mean, people were giving him tips like, "Oh, thanks for checking on security, and we need people to be doing stuff like this and exposing stuff like this." So, yeah, I, I think I would. I don't know. Do you, do you guys agree? I mean, I, I think you would. I mean, did he do anything wrong? Was this dangerous to do? Should he do, should he should he have done it a different way, or is this is this a good thing for people to be doing? Well, it sounds like he didn't affect anybody else. Like it was all kind of just like he knew about it, and it he just showed that this transaction right. was messed up, and it didn't really. The only way it affected other people was just rumors spreading or people seeing something weird, but it didn't actually. Right. As soon as the yeah, I I I'd say it sounds like a pretty good thing. I I'd say I'm glad, and the fact that people are tipping him just cements that for me. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm always for people doing this, and like the guy, the guy trying to break the transaction limit or, or the block size limit or whatever. I yeah. I generally tend to think all that stuff is good. Right. The only thing I would could think of is you know maybe he could have done it with 
his own addresses and just smaller amounts so that people didn't really even notice and didn't really freak out. Uh, just because I don't, I'm not really sure why he would have chosen to done it with Satoshi's addresses, unless unless he did need people to maybe maybe he did it just to prove like that it worked, you know, like to say, look, these are clearly not my addresses, or yeah. more or less clearly. I and feel I like really it's more have, believable. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like if you're able to control those really old addresses, then yeah, that you you might. Uh, you're probably messing with something. So yeah, that's true. But it, maybe he could have at least just tested it first with his own addresses and with hardly any money that so that people wouldn't have noticed it as much. But although maybe he did do that, and then he's like, "All right, now I need people to notice. Let me find Satoshi's addresses." So <laughs> anyway, anything, Tim? You would just generally agree? Any thoughts on good or bad? Should he have done it differently? I mean, from everything I've heard, it doesn't. It doesn't seem that bad. I don't know enough about stuff like that to really make any kind of judgment. Right. Well, the, yeah, that's that's probably true for me and John too. It's just it's all this coding stuff and APIs and stuff. So we don't know the exact details, but anyway. All right. Cool. Well, hey, anybody out there, uh, the place to be is you, me, and btc.com/live. You can watch, listen, tweet us. We are still taking tweets. Uh, we've already got a few today, so that's been lots of fun. And uh, oh, hey, check it out. Enjoy Bitcoins sent us a uh, a uh, change tip for 2,000 bits. He doesn't steps. get any of it. He says, baby steps, no rush, you guys are busy, keep up the great work. And you're right, Tim, you don't get any of it because you don't believe in change tips. So, <laughs> Hey, huge thank you there, man. It's uh, Like I said, I said this at the very beginning of the show, I'm not sure if you were around. We absolutely appreciate every bit of support that we get from you guys. If it involves money, that's awesome. It helps the network, it helps us involve, do new stuff. And actually, it actually... It's money has been becoming even more important over the last few weeks because I've been trying to expand. I've been, you know, I subscribed to a new podcast host, and I'm thinking about doing some app kind of thing, which you know that could cost money and being on the Android store and stuff. There's a lot of promotional stuff I've been thinking about recently that involves money, and every little bit of support that we can get means everything it's it's it, it's great and and if you can't do it with money a retweet a facebook like a, a comment uh clicking the heart button on spreaker all that it's it's a huge huge help and we appreciate every bit of it so thank you again at enjoy bitcoins toss him a follow please and we also have a tweet from somebody named adrian g uh the twitter handle is at face underscore radiation uh, thanks for the love, the Twitter love, first of all. And he says, hey, guys, I'm curious. Are you guys miners? Well, isn't that fun? I'm going gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to reply with an awesome link to a video. And actually, I, this is an easy one to say on air, too. So if anybody wants to know about our mining experience, go to youme and btc.com slash bfl. And the BFL is because of Butterfly Labs. So go to you, me, and btc.com slash BFL, and you'll know you'll you'll see a video there. Interesting. I'm not seeing the video right now because. Oh no, it is there. It's 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 lower on the page. So I'm gonna put that in the tweet too. But check it out. You'll see our thoughts on Butterfly Labs. But real quick, just for fun, Tim, maybe in uh, two or three minutes, do you want to say, tell our mining story? Actually, I think it's in episode one. We also, uh, it's called Bitcoin Ethics and a Miner Story. So the audio quality was, was crappy back then, but we touched on the story then. But you want to give a quick summary, Tim, uh, about what we did with our miner? Oh, you mean at the end or just how we got it? Uh, from the beginning, yeah, how we got into okay. mining, how much we did. Well, when we got into it originally, when we saw, or Daniel contacted me after seeing some kind of an, uh, some kind of advertisement from Butterfly Labs, and originally we were looking at giving, I believe, the smallest one, the 
jalapeno, but then we upped that to like, okay, cool, we'll spend like, like that was one of the first big purchases I think I had made. We're like, okay, we're gonna spend all this money. And then it kept on getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back like everyone else's did on Butterfly Lab. So that was interesting. By the time we finally got it, it the mining power wasn't as good as it had been. What was it, about a year? Half a year? Yeah. Uh, so I've, I've been sending this tweet. Did you, did you mention that I kind of broke it? <laughs> no, I only got to where we, how long it took to get to us after we ordered it. Uh, oh, yeah. yes. well, that's, that's the first thing. It took, uh, I don't know, probably six or eight months to be delivered. So. Okay. And then after that, we started having some problems with the fan not always running to cool it. So even whenever it was working, it wasn't working. No, even when it, even once we had it, it wasn't always working. And then you, you opened it or something and shorted something out. Is that whenever you shorted yeah, the fan? Yeah, I, I forget what I was trying to do. Oh, I, I. I think I wanted to open or like take off the end pieces just to make it quieter. And yeah, something, some kind of spark and something jumped and the fan quit working. Yeah, I broke it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so then we kind of let it run for a little bit with an extra fan, but then it just kept on quitting, quitting, quitting. And so we started to shoot it and burn it and <laughs> make a video of that. So that yeah. was more fun. Letting it sit there and minus five cents every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we made we we made our money back, and we had a lot of fun with it, just learning about it and and learning about how dumb Butterfly Labs was. And then, yeah, we we made a video of us shooting it with guns and burning it in fire and hacking at it with axes. And we put it to some of John's. He he's a musician, and we put it to some of his heaviest metal music. So, with some screamo and everything, and. It was. It was a lot of fun. So if you want to watch the video, that's at youmeandbtc.com slash BFL for Butterfly Labs. youmeandbtc.com slash BFL. And uh, it, uh, it was, yeah, that was fun. So anyway, yeah, so thanks again. Thanks for all those tweets. Uh, we, like I see, the question was, are you guys miners? Uh, we used to be not at the moment. I, if if I had the money, I would do it again just for fun, not really to to profit, but just to support the network. If if I could find a cheap miner, which I'm sure they're out there, and maybe I will, but uh, I I think you know, it's worth doing just uh, to support the network, even if you don't profit. So anyway, all right, that was fun. Uh, Really, we're getting some awesome Twitter love today, so thanks for all that. And uh, I guess it's time to head to a new story. So uh, I think it's Tim's turn if you have anything ready. Uh, but I will say real quick, uh, I want to say another thank you to Genetrust and Wall of Coins. Uh, you can buy and sell Bitcoin super quick, same day. You can sell it for cash, available immediately in your bank account, or buy it with cash. And literally with, within minutes, you can uh, have any amount of Bitcoin you like, and you don't even have to create an account. So if you want to try out buying, you can head to youmeandbtc.com slash buy, and we have a widget there. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome company. <laughs> Wall of Coins, try it out at youmeandbtc.com slash buy. All right, Tim, what do you got for us? Drop a link. Well, I have that. It's not so much an article. It is <clears throat> just driving things back to Greece and the economy in general of the world. Uh, it's from Yay. the business. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, I was cheering for Greece. We uh, uh them falling apart. Is that what you, that's not very nice. No, 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 no. Just, just the topic because we talk no. about Greece a lot. So, Daniel supports economic collapse. Don't you remember? I'm all I for know. economic I collapse. I just didn't know what Daniel was. Uh, we've we've talked about that for ages too. I think we put it in our poll one time. Which another reminder: we still have our poll oh, yeah. up. It will be up all week at youmeandbtc.com slash live, and you can tell us if you got goxed, yes or no. Or you can write your own answer and tell us how much you lost or whatever you like. So, anyway, yeah. So what's uh what's new with Greece? Is, is this uh, anything new or what? what what's mm, the date here? Oh, no, August fourth. Okay. 
It's not anything new, though. Well, actually, what the Business Insider, the article is saying, is they don't think that it's going to help in Greece. What they think is going to help in Greece, by their words, which I'm willing to bet this person probably doesn't even know what this means. They're kind of just saying it. Uh, it's that in, they're saying that this is going to help in Argentina and Venezuela because it lets you move your money around. They're saying in Greece it needs to find their specific way of wording it. Yeah, um, that's I. This is something that I uh, talked about quite a bit, and th this was actually just our last episode, uh, eighty-three, I believe, and we uh, last Thursday, and you can obviously find it on our site. But yeah, we talked about how, as as for Greece, there, it, it's kind of too late for them now. It really is. I mean, there's not much they can do anymore because their money is already kind of locked up and there's capital controls and everything. But other countries, they sort of still have a chance and now is the time to jump into Bitcoin before it is too late like it is with Greece. I don't and know how it is. is that... He's not saying that. He, he's saying that because it doesn't really make sense. It's a stupid article. Because <laughs> uh, according to him, he says, so does that mean that Greece could survive on Bitcoin? I don't know if it's a him. Maybe it's not a him. It's his name. The name is Alex Christensen, so whatever. I don't really care. Currency. You made me lose it again, Daniel. Uh, not uh, my fault. Uh, does Bitcoin could? So does that mean Greece could survive on Bitcoin? No. Here's why. Bitcoin has the same problems for Greece that the euro does. Greece needs expansionary monetary policy to try to jumpstart inflation and lighten its debt load. Where, uh, however you go about doing that in any kind of way, I don't know. What? So he's, but, he says, like, outright that Greece needs monetary expansion? I get, an expansionary monetary policy. What the heck? Whatever. See, I'd love to be able to write for things like this that I can just say things and not actually back them up with anything besides just saying <laughs> random words that I think sound cool. I guess I already do sometimes. <laughs> yeah, what do you mean, Tim? That's, that's you every episode. <laughs> yeah, the only difference is that you don't actually have to write it. You can just say it. Yeah, it's so much easier. Uh, <laughs> they're saying that it would be good in places, this article is saying it would be good for places like Argentina and Venezuela where yeah. the problem is getting money in and out, which I thought was the problem in Greece. or Unless he's somehow thinking that just because private no, people no, no. will be able to... It, this what? is from a while ago, but I what I've heard was that places like Argentina or places in South America, you can't really bring cash in. Like if you if you're a no. tourist, you can't bring more than maybe you know fifty, hundred, a few hundred bucks, and that's it. So I think that's what they're saying about Bitcoin is you, with Bitcoin you can get money in and out, obviously because it's on the internet, uh, which you can't really do with with other fiat currencies, and so uh, I think I think that's what he would kind of be saying. It's just Bitcoin is helpful in that kind of a situation, right? Right? Yeah, but why wouldn't it help in Greece's situation? Be well, because Greece, their money's already stuck. They can't really get their fiat currency, their euros. They can't get a hold of them in order to buy Bitcoin and, or and get into it. Plus. Uh, we also, this is something I don't actually think I mentioned to you guys, but I remember one of our earlier live shows, we were asking, like, what's uh, what's the Greek attitude towards Bitcoin? Like, what are, are they open to it? For You know, generally, obviously. Are most people interested in it, or, or are they open to it or not? And I asked, uh, like I said, last episode, it was 83, I believe, and I was I had two slightly more experts than me uh, on uh, on a show with me, and we were talking about Greece. And I asked him, "What's the attitude over there like? Do they are they interested in Bitcoin?" And they said, "No, not really. I mean, it's just the people over there. They like cash. You know, there's not really much digital, and uh, they just they're not that interested in Bitcoin." So, all uh, right, that means I was right. <laughs> Yeah, is that is that what you said? I think so. <laughs> yeah, it sounds I, like I something do. I would say. 
Yeah, I, I think you might be right. Yeah, because I remember I was surprised. You're like, I was asking if you think uh, Bitcoin will help any of them, and you're just like, no, no, I don't think so. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And uh, yeah, you might be right. So anyway, so yeah, that's that's why it's kind of too late for Greece, partly because of capital controls, partly just because the lack of interest. Um, but so maybe I'll pose this again. Do you think? Places like Argentina, while they still kind of sort of have time, do you think people over there are going to get into it? Well, we've I, seen on that graph, it's Latin yeah, America is increasing. Right, that's what I was just thinking. We covered uh, just about half an hour ago the uh, some bit pace, uh, some bit pace statistics, and yeah, the, you're right. Latin America has seen some insane growth, but just in the past, you know two or three quarters. So yeah, maybe maybe they do have a better mindset and maybe they will start to get into Bitcoin and understand it and using it to, to keep them safe from the fate, uh, from a similar fate to Greece's. So yeah. Anything else uh, worth touching on in that article, Tim? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's fairly long. I don't know. Is there anything we missed? The he's, mostly just, he's mostly just talking about how fucked up Greece is. <laughs> yeah, 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 but really... here's another thing. This is something that I don't think we've talked about much, but I remember hearing it. The This is Argentina, I believe, still, and he says, the problem is exacerbated by the government's artificially high exchange rate with the dollar. This has led to, the, to a black market dollar for swapping or a blue market. Uh, a blue dollar market, and this is yeah, it, this is not completely news because it's been going on for several months. But it it might be worth talking about just the fact that, uh, yeah, the the government really messes with. Not only can you not really bring very much cash into places like Argentina, but the government just completely screws with the exchange rate, and it's uh, they, uh. uh my guess is that they adjust the exchange rate in order to bring more dollars to to the government and less to the people, I believe. Because they, they, they probably the government I'm sure wants US dollars because it's way better than whatever fiat currency they're printing. And uh, so anyway, so they mess with it. Cool. Enter <laughs> enter Bitcoin. Although still used by only a small number of Argentines, it is a way around the official currency controls that does not use the blue dollar market. Recently, the government has begun cracking down on unofficial exchange markets. See, now that I didn't hear about, because I, when, I, when I heard about this a few months ago, you know, it was just, every, it, people were kind of joking, like, there are black market people just on every street corner and nobody really cares. But now it looks like, they're kind of cracking down on those people who are exchanging dollars at, at an unofficial rate. Uh, here, the strength of Bitcoin, anonymous money transfer across otherwise restricted borders is what small businesses are yearning for. And yeah, I, I generally agree with that. It, it would be a huge help, and and hopefully we see it helping them out. Helping them out so, cool. All right. Any uh, Any thoughts, final thoughts before we close that story? All right, well, thanks, everybody, for being here. Another reminder to check out you, me, and btc.com slash live. you still got about 12 minutes uh, to send us a tweet if you're interested, if you want us to cover it live, although, you know, we call them, we call them the open tweet lines, and they are open all week long. So if, you want, if you're listening to the podcast <clears throat> or watching the YouTube video later, absolutely, you're welcome to send us a tweet. Uh, at you, me, and BTC with the hashtag YMB Live, or just click the button at you, me, and BTC.com slash live. Uh, and uh, you can vote in our poll there too, near the bottom. Tell us if you got goxed or uh, how much you lost. Tell us anything you like, really. And uh, I'll, th I'll throw another reminder uh, w uh, with the Spreaker player, which it should be on most of our podcasts and player pages and our live stream and stuff. Just another reminder to every time you see the little heart button for our, for an episode, 
uh, on the Spreaker player. We'd love for you to click it if uh, if you're willing. It it should help us out to get more uh, noticed and higher up on the lists and everything. So, I mean, I don't know that for sure. I I don't know everything about Spreaker and how it works. It's a new thing we're trying out. But yeah, if you you know, all you got to do is click. If you see the heart button, we'd love a click. So. Anyway, I think then it's time to turn it over to John, I guess. If you, I don't know if you've got more stories or anything interesting, but I think it's your turn. So what do you got? Yeah, well, I have, let's see. Uh, I'll, I'll go with this one. I don't know if we'll talk about it that much because, to be honest, I don't really follow this kind of stuff, but it's a Coindesk article called Seven Politicians in Support of Bitcoin and Blockchain Tech. Now, I, to be honest, before looking at this, I've, I think I've only heard of one person on here. <laughs> <laughs> or wait, no, yeah. t- two. So anyways, yeah, here, I'll post it in the chat because I guess I forgot to. Yeah, I don't I don't know why. It just seemed, I had two articles and this seems like the other one was another X accepts Bitcoin article, so I guess I'll go with this one. Um, <coughs> although it's not that much different. So, uh, yeah, we got number one, Jared Polis. He's a U.S. congressman. Uh, he Apparently he had a satirical response to policymakers wanting to ban Bitcoin. Oh, wow. Um, it, if there was an agency that reacted in an irrationally negative way to digital currencies, I would be happy to rally support in Congress to restrict their funding. Something like that. <laughs> I see he says uh, Polis argued that the U.S. dollar should be banned, not the cryptocurrency. That's, uh, uh, I don't like politicians, but that's, that's a cool thought because, because yeah, I mean, we talk about that a lot. The U.S. dollar is is equally as corrupt as, as Bitcoin and stuff. So, so yeah, let's ban the dollar. <laughs> yeah, number two, <coughs> excuse me, Dan Elder. He's running for the U.S. House in the state of Missouri. Uh, <clears throat> he looks really young. Like, he looks like 25 yeah. or something. Yeah, so apparently he funded his campaign solely th- in Bitcoin. The oh, first wow. congressional candidate in the United States to do so. And, um, yeah, he said it was a unique way to bring integrity back into the notion of money. Uh, he's an Air National Guard veteran and IT specialist. Yeah. He said he's... Go for it. Yeah, he says he saw Bitcoin as a competitor for fiat. And that's uh, that's pretty decent, too. I mean, we we like competition, free market, so... Yeah, and he... uh, Apparently, it says he did it to, uh, to take a stance against the Federal Reserve and its policies, which have weakened the U.S. dollar. All right, moving on. Number three, George Galloway. He's a British politician. <laughs> Across <He's>, the pond. <laughs> yeah, he's a <laughs> yeah mayoral candidate for London. Uh, he said he plans to leverage the blockchain to track the mayor of London's expenditure in a bid for greater transparency. Okay. Yeah, another cool uh, another cool point. I mean, again, not a huge fan of politicians, but. <laughs> If you're going for transparency, that's that's better than somebody I think that's not going for transparency. So, yeah. So yeah. apparently, there's something he has called Mayor's Chain, which is a blockchain-based public expenditure manager system, and that's what he pledges to run the capital on, their budget on. Yeah. So that's that's pretty cool. Uh, let me see. There's a link for that. Let me check that real quick and see if there's anything interesting. Mayor'schain.com. Yes. <laughs> The power of us all. Full budget transparency. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean... Uh, Using right technology now. to make every detail of the budget visible to the public as a first step. It's got a picture of the guy's face on it. It seems pretty cool. How do you make a government 100% financially accountable? Yeah, this seems pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, right now, I think a lot of things are technically transparent. Like, technically, the public has access to the budget and everything. 
but it's it's probably my guess is it's really difficult to access that stuff and read through it, and then it's even harder to see if they actually follow the budget and where the money goes when and everything. So, yeah, that's that's an interesting idea, and it's better than nothing, I guess. <laughs> All right, we got four more. Let's see if we can do this in six minutes. Andrew Hemingway <laughs> is a Republican running for governor in New Hampshire. He is po- proposed using blockchain during elections. That's interesting. I haven't really heard of anyone proposing that before. Yeah, uh, well, I've, I've I've heard of a, a voting uh, system that uses the blockchain. Yeah, uh, but yeah. If, if it was for elections, that'd be pretty decent. Yeah. So apparently, he did this on Twitter. Someone asked him about his views on voting ideas or voting IDs. Sorry. And uh, he said we could apply the Bitcoin blockchain algorithm to help solve this problem. Use the principle of distributed consensus. It's kind of vague, but you also only have 140 characters. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, uh, another thing to point out is that he's from New Hampshire, which is the that's where the Free State Project is. So yeah. there's a lot of liberty-minded people there and gigantic Bitcoin lovers. So. So that's um, that's the kind of thing that that would be real helpful to to get him elected, I guess. And uh, yeah, so yeah, he might have some fans. Yeah, number five, another one from across the pond. Galnar Hasnain <laughs> is a Green Party candidate uh, running for Vauxhall, a district in central London, or Vauxhall. I don't know how you say that. Uh, yeah, she's the first mainstream political candidate to accept Bitcoin in the UK. And she's using uh, one name, which I'm not quite sure what that is. Oh, it's a m- in change tip, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know what one name is. Maybe we can look at that some nice. other time. Hey, we take change tip, and if you send us a change tip, uh, Tim doesn't get any of it, so it's even better. So Yeah, you can be sure that your money is going to somewhere worthwhile. <laughs> That's actually, I forgot to mention this earlier, but when I write, I told you that we have the audio stream on our webpage, and I described it below it, and I said the audio stream is perfect for when you don't want to see Tim's ugly face on the video stream. You can just listen to the audio. So You still have to hear his voice, though. We haven't quite figured out how to, how to yeah, get we rid of that without kicking Tim off, because we have to keep him <laughs> off for, for, uh, for arguing with <laughs> And for just uh, <laughs> moral points or something, like we did something yeah. good for him. All right, <laughs> hey guys. let's get Number on with six. this. Number six is Rand Paul. He's the only one who I really know anything about, and that that's because we've talked about him accepting Bitcoin in a previous episode. He started accepting Bitcoin in April of this year. He, people have described him as libertarian... After his father, it's kind of hard to say that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, technically he's a Republican, but yeah, yeah. Liber- liberty, some liberty ideas. Yeah, and he's definitely got some, some decent ideas. Somebody, and, the Washington Post said that his decision to accept Bitcoin was a genius political move. I don't know if I'd say genius. I mean, it's it's a good idea, but nothing like, Nothing revolutionary or yeah, crazy, because like that earlier guy, he, it funded his campaign a hundred percent through right, Bitcoin, right. So, that's, <laughs> so I mean, but uh, but Rand not, Paul is a high profile candidate, so that's true, true, definitely. There is a, yeah, a he, bit of a yeah, that, Rand Paul number six, and then number seven is Rick Perry. Those are the only two names I recognize. I wouldn't have recognized yeah. Rick Perry's face, but I would recognize Rand Paul's face. <laughs> I've actually this is the first time I've seen Rand Paul's face, but I, <laughs> I I know I've heard his name many times. And Rick Perry, yeah. I've recognized the name, but yeah, no face. Yeah, he shared his stance on Bitcoin to the during an interview. He stated his support for regulatory breathing room for digital currencies. So I guess he doesn't want to completely clamp down on them. So yeah, which again, I guess that counts as support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh it's the same kind of thing. I'm not a huge fan of politicians. I'm not a huge fan of regulations, but I'd rather have breathing room than than nothing. So yeah, it's 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 kind of cool, so nice. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it. Yeah, if uh if you're the voting type, 
uh, I don't know, check out this list and see if, see if there's somebody you would vote for. I'm, uh, I, I think technically I'm on the fence. I, I lean pretty heavily towards not really having any reason to vote. But if you are the voting type, check it out. I'm showing 259, so I want to show uh, or give another gigantic thank you to everyone who was here today for our two hours of Bitcoin headlines. It was a ton of fun. Uh, two web pages that i got to mention. Obviously, I've been mentioning it the whole time. You, me, and btc.com slash live. The uh, tweet button will be... Uh, open you know all week long send us anything you like we could get to it next week same thing for the poll go ahead and drop a vote I think what I was seeing last time I checked was about uh, about two-thirds uh, not really getting goxed and one-third said yes I was goxed so but you can fill in uh, whatever answer you like too if you want to tell us how much you lost or or uh, anything like that and, yeah, another thank you to everybody that was active on Twitter. We had some awesome uh, people out there asking questions and uh, giving us some tips. Yeah, like I said, we're always, uh, we love change tip. Every little bit of support means a whole lot. And like I said, especially within the past, uh, within the past couple of weeks, uh, I've been, you know, finding some stuff that uh, we can help promote the podcast, but it costs money. So money's great if you're willing to change tip or there's an address on our website. Or if you if you don't want to spend money, tweets, follows, subscriptions on Spreaker or iTunes or reviews. We actually, we could definitely use some reviews on Stitcher. Tell us what we're, yeah, tell us what we're doing wrong. Or just, yeah, yeah anything. If you want to, If you want to bash Tim to death, uh, figuratively, murder him. I know you want to murder him, but it's I don't know. Some apparently that's bad or something. I don't know. But if you want to figuratively bash him, uh, leave us a review. Yeah, on Stitcher and search for you, me, and BTC. Hopefully it'll show up. Cool. All right. I mean, uh, I think that about covers it. And uh, check out Wall of Coins at you, me, and BTC dot com slash buy. Tune in tomorrow. Uh, we plugged this last week, but then we decided to run a different episode. So this time it should be for real. Tune in tomorrow for a discussion about the blockchain and kind of the revolutionary ideas behind it and governance and chicken abuse. We actually talked quite a bit about chicken abuse. So tune in tomorrow for that discussion. Tune in next Wednesday, 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you keep the tweets rolling in, and we'll see you then. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.